Hey, this is David. Welcome to What the Print. So for this week's model, my friend Peter asked me to print a tracer from Overwatch. Peter and I have a lot in common, namely a couple hundred hours of Overwatch. We play whenever we can in the weekends and evenings, try and get a lot of, uh, a lot of killing done. It's a lot of fun. You should come and join us sometime. Why Tracer? I mean, Tracer is the flagship character from Overwatch. They use her on all the marketing materials. She's really iconic, really clear silhouette. Great character. Peter also loves to play Tracer. It's his uh, secondary character when he can. She's a lot of fun. So I found this model on my mini factory. They have some really great stylized Overwatch characters. They tend to do them in a little bit more stylized than the official stuff from Blizzard, but that gives them a really cool finish, and yeah, it makes them a lot of fun. I've got myself a Brigitte, which I printed uh, just after the Tracer. Really, really great model. I printed this on my CR10 Mini behind me, um, layer height of 0.16 millimeter. Took about 12 and a half hours. In terms of interesting settings, I used the minimum infill area, which I discussed last week, that allowed for the legs and arms to be a lot stronger, uh, a lot more sturdy than normal. And I also used tree supports, absolutely love tree supports. I'll get back to that in a couple of minutes, but yeah, in general tree supports just make printing complicated models a lot easier. I enabled ironing, which the, makes the nozzle go around the outer wall and apply a bit of heat without any filament. What that means is that you get this nice glossy finish on your models. I'm really happy with the way that turned out on this model, and you'll see it in a second. It's super shiny, super smooth, absolutely beautiful. I think so far this is the best looking print I've done. In terms of filament, I used a giant arm gradient PLA. This giant arm gradient PLA is sort of like a rainbow, where within the spool, every couple of layers it changes color. Uh, what ends up happening then, if you have a big enough print, is you get this cool gradient happening across the height of the print. I really like this PLA. I've had a lot of fun printing with it. I printed like a, a big D20 dice box, which transitioned from purple to blue. And for this model, it just so happened that the color transition was orange to yellow, which happens to match up with Blizzard's in-game colors for Tracer. This made me very happy because it just it matched perfectly. As you can see in the coloring, it, it works. My main issue with this PLA is that there's too much of a gap between the color changes. So you normally have to do quite a big print that uses quite a lot of filament to actually get a proper color change. I tried some vase mode stuff and was sorely disappointed because I printed a bin about this size and it was all blue. And that unfortunately is the case when it takes a couple hundred grams or at least a hundred grams of filament before it changes color. So I do wish that they made one with faster color changes, but still, this filament is great. During the print, there were two issues that I encountered. The first one you can maybe see in the time lapse. The supports broke. So I'm not really sure what happened, because by the time I came in to check up on the model, they had actually recovered, which is great. It made me very happy that it didn't completely mess up the model, but it, it broke quite close to the foot, and I think it had something to do with my fan settings and maybe a draft coming through, that it, it popped off the build plate. Then, as it kept printing, it sort of pinned itself back down and continued to print and stabilized. So, no real complaint there. I'm glad it recovered, but I guess this sort of stuff can happen. The second issue that I had during the course of the print is that around the, the elbow on Tracer, there's a little uh, piece sticking out. I think it comes from either her gun or her bracer. And what happened was the nozzle knocked that piece over while it was printing. So that piece was on one piece of support and the rest of the model was attached. And as the nozzle moved to continue printing, it knocked it over. So what I had to do to correct this is I had to break it off and re-glue it with some CA glue.
I hope you like that model. I really think it's beautiful. So Peter is going to paint this and I'll probably post some pictures on my Twitter and Instagram once he does. Uh, maybe even on the YouTube channel. Maybe even I can convince him to come on camera and we can, we can talk about his painting process because he's really good. He loves to paint miniatures. Does an amazing job. Um, yeah, so hopefully I can convince him. Let's see. I know he's watching this, so Peter, you know what to do. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, remember to subscribe and leave some comments. I want to see uh, some more suggestions. I have a really cool one planned for the next video. I've got a gigantic spool of fluorescent pink filament coming in. So this is going to be an interesting one. Pascal, you asked for it, so it's going to happen. It is definitely going to happen. All right. Um, yeah. Remember to like and subscribe. Have a good time and keep printing.